Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm Warasin Chiwakarapan, a medical student from Jalungon University, and today is my pleasure to present a review of literature for medial soft tissue release in TKA for knee OA with virus deformity. So the background, the background of this review of literature is that the OA knee is usually treated with the TKA, but somehow OA knee usually come out with a virus deformity. So the medial soft tissue release usually be performed at the time of TKA. But up until today, there are several techniques for medial soft tissue release and uh, has been no consensus on which is the best technique. So I collected six medial soft tissue release to be reviewed today. So the topic will be uh, the surgical technique, then the results and discussion, and then the author's preferred technique, and then the summary. So let's start with the surgical technique. The first one is the subperiosteal release. This one is performing knee flexion. We release the tibial attachment of the superficial MCL by using the osteotome. We dive it five to eight centimeters from the tibial joint line, and we will consider it as a complete release when the distal soft tissue is free of resistance. The next technique is pie casting. We perform this in knee in extension. We change the contract middle structure and identify the tightest band in the MCL. Then we perform the pie cast using the blade number 11. We perform the transfer incision with a depth of two to three millimeters and the quantity is just two to three pie cast and then we re-evaluate re the medial lateral gap. The third one is the multiple needle punctures. This one is uh, the adaptation of the pie casting technique. So it's maybe similar to the pie casting, except that when we perform the multiple needle puncture, we use the aspiration needle instead of the blade. We perform a perpendicular or slightly oblique incision, and we control the depth by using the cutting edge of the tip. Uh, we perform it five to 10 times, then we re-evaluate. The first one is the medial epicondyla osteotomy. Uh, we perform the osteotomy by using the chisel with the direction of distal to proximal along the long axis of the femur. Then we suture it for the reattachment of the medial epicondyle after implantation. The fifth technique is femoral origin release of the MCL. This one is performed in knee flexion we identify and measure the anterior posterior width of the MCL insertion. Then we perform the release using the blade number 11. Each time of the release is one third of the width of the AP. And then we perform it until the medial lateral gap become balanced. The last technique is semi brembenosus release. This one performed in the knee flexion and we cut the semi brembenosus tendon at the tibial insertion with the blade and we completely release it with the periosteal elevator. So go on for the result of each technique. Uh, the subperiosteal release, that is a study to, that is study of the midterm clinical outcome. And in that study, they found that 80% of the knee were defined as stable. And there is no case of reoperation due to the MCL instability. In pie casting, this is usually compared to the subperiosteal release, and they always found no significant differences in the hip, knee, ankle, angle, international knee society score, and the range of motion. In multiple needle puncture, uh, that is a quantitative study, and they found that after every five needle punctures, the flexion and extension gap significantly increased. And they also found the predictors for the over-release in this technique which include knee inflection, narrow MCL, and severe osteoarthritis. In medial epicondylar osteotomy, this one is compared to the subperiosteal release, and they found that there is no significant difference in the clinical outcome, but somehow they found it the less stability of the knee in this group. In femoral origin release of the MCL, uh, in one study, they found that four out of 17 knees uh, becomes valgus instability at 12 and 24 weeks, but at the final follow-up, they found no remnant of the instability. In semi-brembenosus release, 
uh, when they compared this to the non-release group, they found no difference in the strength of the knee. But they also found that they still have the knee with the restoral medial tightness with performed with this technique. The superior osteolysis has advantage from the continuity of the soft tissue with the periosteum. And we can also use additional tips to monitor the extent of the release. But in the advantage, there can be the over-release in the severe virus deformity. For pie crusting, this is the stair-step technique. We perform it inside out so we avoid neurovascular injury. And this can be performed in the severe joint damage. But somehow we cannot control the depth, of the, ang and the depth and the angle of the pie crust. In multiple needle puncture, we can control the depth by using the cutting edge of the needle. And this can be performed in the moderate virus deformity, but it's not good in severe virus deformity due to the fibrosis of the knee. In medial epicondylar osteotomy, the advantage is that the knee stability. This is because the continuity of the MCL and the adductor magnus. And this one uh, has bone-to-bone -bone healing. Mm, the disadvantage of this is the fibrous union and uh, heterotropic ossification can also occur. For femoral origin release of the MCL, this has a better in healing environment from the abundant sub blood supply at the femoral origin. And they say they use less area to be healed. And this one can be performed in the severe virus deformity. But uh, we need more study to confirm the advantage of this technique. For a semi brembenosis release, uh, the advantage is that this one is usually uh, combined with other techniques, so we can avoid unnecessary release. But uh, so the disadvantage is that we need to combine it with other. So in our institute at Jualongon Hospital, we prefer to use subprey osteolysis because we have performed a study and we found that there has good midterm clinical outcome after we follow the patient for six years. And in this, in this technique, we do not need any further attenuation of the superficial MCL. And even we found that we use thicker polyethylene in this technique, which contribute to elevation of the jaw line. But from the study, we found no effect of the range of motion from this technique. So the conclusion of this review of literature, up until today, there is still no consensus for the best technique to be used. And we think that uh, the best technique to be used in any institute is depend on the surgeon's surgical skill experience and preference. So thank you for today.